Folks, it is a banner day. I was not prepared for this day, even though I should have been. We got the Vanderpump Rules Season 11 trailer. Now, just right off the bat, we were wrong about a couple of things. I was hearing January 17th. We find out that it is January 30th. Season 11 premieres on January 30th. That's good, because I was like, I need a whole month of January before I can delve into recaps of Random Pump Rules Season 11. But it's here. It's good, I think. I'm a little desensitized to Vanderpump Rules, but we're going to go through it. We're going to go through it frame by frame. We're going to exhaust this thing just in just like So Bad It's Good does. We're going to do this. My one big complaint right off the bat, where's Ken? Did you, did you know something? They, they what a missed opportunity here. You needed to start the trailer with Ken shuffling in and like, did you know it's a new season? Oh, he wants this a new going. So I'm trying to have a redemption. I, I can't believe that. That's how you should have started this trailer, Mike. And by the way, it's just. I just want a flash of him at some point. Is he okay? And that's can we just get confirmation that Ken is okay? Like, I mean, he, to me, was the star of season 10 with that scene. We don't even get a flow. We get Lisa. I need Ken. There is so much goodness in this trailer. We'll go through this. I've already gotten a little pieces of information from behind the scenes stuff. Of course, a big revelation right off the bat is allegedly Tom, uh, Tom Schwartz, the other Tom made out with Sheena, Sheena, but I also am hearing that potentially that that is not Sheena, but it's mini Sheena. Remember season eight, the the Sheena lookalike that that worked at uh, the Vanderpump Garden. I'm hearing that's what might this might be in reference to, but who knows? But if Sheena made out with Schwartz at some point, I mean, that would have been during Katie's and Tom's marriage or relationship. Oh, you guys. I mean, the trailer, this is like. Da Vinci code. It just, it's peeling back more layers. Here we go. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, hi, hello. If you're listening to this on the podcast, hi, hello. Here we go. Uh, okay. Are you guys ready? Here we go. If I can survive what I thought was the worst case scenario, then. Okay. Wait, just right off the bat. Okay. So Ariana, the voiceover saying, if she can survive this, she can survive any scenario. And you have the Vanderpump ladies. You have. L- <laughs> Lala is is Lala in like a mini geisha dress. It's very interesting. And then Katie is wearing like a baseball jersey. It's like she's got a dress on, but then a like a baseball jersey over the dress and a, a big statement necklace. And then Ariana looks like she's in like a two piece neon green dress. She looks amazing. And then I think that's Sheener uh, right there, just walking down the street. Just four ladies taking the town by storm. So Ariana's letting us know she learned so much already. And then we cut to a shot of uh, Lala, Ariana, Katie Maloney, all in sunglasses, all in black. And then you have Sheena's sister right there in white, right next to them. I can do anything. All the doors are open for you. If I don't want to be your... Okay, so she's, you know, I can do anything. And Lisa's like, well, the doors, the doors open for you, my love. And if you look in the background, you can tell they're in the something about her sandwich shop. But Ariana goes in the voiceover, you know, if I don't want to do this, I'm not going to do this. If I don't want to do this, I'm not going to do this. Now, another big question that gets revealed immediately in the first couple of seconds is we see Ariana kissing her new boyfriend, Daniel, the personal trainer slash bar manager. And I got to tell you, it's a little, even though I've seen photos of these guys, it is, it, it's weird seeing them on the show. Uh, I got to tell you, it is just weird, not weird in a bad way. It's just, it's, it's going to take some time to get used to because the last we saw it was Sandoval and Ariana kissing and all that. I'm, I'm happier, but it's just, it's going to take a second, you know? Around my ex, I literally don't have to. I'll just keep existing like I normally do in my own house. Okay, so if I don't want to see my ex, I don't have to. And then she says, I'm just going to keep existing like I always do in my own house, like I can. And then it immediately cuts, it immediately slam cuts to Tom Sandoval. Looks like he's coming out of the shitter. He's like, oh, dude, I just wrestled with a big old poop, dude. Oh, dude, got to go to band practice. But it's kind of like a womp womp. Just seeing Tom just like, oh, dude, oh, it would have been awesome if he's like lighting a match 
or if he like is spraying air freshener, but he just kind of seems like he walks out, you know. Like we all do. Why are they living Ugh. together anyway? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Okay, so that's Lisa saying, why are they living together anyways? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And she's talking to James and Allie, uh, James, DJ James Kennedy and Allie Luber. And the funny thing is, though, is, well, it's not funny, but he's holding uh, him and Rachel's dog, Graham, who now, remember, there's been so much that's happened, but we know a lot of it through social media. He is renamed Graham Hippie. Which already with a dog with potential behavioral issues, is it good? Is it good to get a name change for a dog this late into the game? But also, I love Lisa going, uh, it's, just, uh, it's so ridiculous them living together. And then the shot of DJ James Kennedy, who's done so many ridiculous things, and they're like, they're kind of like in agreement. I'm like, everybody's ridiculous on this show. What do you mean ridiculous? Are you, do we need to go through DJ James Kennedy's relationships? Remember the, the the Dodie of it all? Remember the Rachel of it all? It is all ridiculous. It is going to be funny if we see season 11, DJ James Kennedy being kind of the straight man, the reliable narrator. We speak about that concept a lot. If he's going to be the reliable narrator, we could be potentially in a lot of trouble, folks. This season on Vanderpump Rules. That's Ariana's side. Sandoval's side over here. Don't go over the line. Okay, so this obviously they have a beach scene. It wouldn't be a Vanderpump Rules season if the the gang didn't all get together by the water. And DJ James Kennedy, being his jovial self, would like, oh, this is Ariana's side, and this is Tom Sandoval's side. Guys night, guys night, and he's drawing a line in the sand. Literally, very. I mean, what a a line in the sand, just like a line in the sand. How Ariana had to draw uh, draw with Tom, but this is amazing, and it's probably based on a scene that they're talking about or an episode they're talking about where they explain Ariana and Tom's living situation, which they, you know, make sure they go through an intermediary. They're not in the same living space when somebody else is there. I do know that Ariana now, uh, even though she still owns half that house is not currently living there, but uh, I know she was at another space during dancing with the stars, but I'll, I don't know. So anyways, that's what obviously this is. You see Tom, and we saw a teaser at BravoCon, which a lot of you guys had seen, with a, a little bit more of this scene where Sandoval finally is like, I'm out of here, dude. I'm dipping out, dude. For your own good, you got to get out and start dating people again. I'm young. Hot. Okay, so now this is a scene with Schwartz. He's in a, like a, looks like a, like a suit of some sort, but I, I know this is a small detail. This is how, you know, but you can tell like the back of the suits are kind of like wrinkled up with the collar area, it's not sitting well. Um, and he's like, dude, you got to get back out there, dude. You know, come on, man. And then we hear Sandoval's like, I'm, I'm, I'm young, single, and ready to mingle, dude, while he's working out and smiling. I, I got to tell you, and also we see him like w turning a corner with a very young woman on his arm. I mean, there's another young woman in this that Schwartz and Katie are potentially involved with, with which we see in a second in the trailer. But also, I love when they, I love I love when a man's single and it's like I've got to date the youngest looking girl possible because I still look young. I think sometimes in Sandoval's head he thinks he looks like he's twenty three, so like that potentially gives him the okay to date in that age range. Who knows? But remember, we're potentially seeing a redemption season for Tom Sandoval. So we're going to probably see a lot of like, I just got to, I just got to keep pumping iron, dude. I've quit smoking. I've quit drinking. I'm living a healthy lifestyle. I'm not doing therapy, but I'm going to do these other, I'm not, I'm not seeking professional help, but I'm doing these other things like working out. Yeah. Single ready to mingle. The worm is worming. If you're going to be friends. Okay. And then of course we get a quick shot of Tom Sandoval doing, <laughs> Speaking of young, never. we see a shot of uh, Tom Sandoval doing a Michael Jackson dance move at a bowling alley, like, and then Ariana cut to her going, the worm is worming, which of course we all take to mean like worm with worm with a mustache. Tom Sandoval is the worm and worm is worming potentially means that Tom is probably getting his dick wet every which way from Sunday, or at least he's trying to to keep his mind right.
get the dick wet, don't do therapy. That's what we're chalking this all up to. Now we see a shot of Katie Maloney. With him, she's gonna cut you off. Okay, sorry. I, I know I'm stop starting a lot here, but there's a lot to cover. I think Katie Maloney, who's in a very smart bla uh, little vest with a um, looks very pretty. Uh, I think she's talking to Sheena and saying like, "Listen, if you're gonna like hang out with Tom, you're potentially gonna mess." with your friendship with Ariana. Now, remember Ariana was first brought onto this show by Sheena on season one because uh, Ariana was Sheena's background dancer for the Can You Freak Bitch. Remember the iconic Sunset Boulevard Sheena Marie concert? But also Ariana made it very clear that she was not going to be friends with people that were currently hanging out with Tom Sandoval. Now, of course, that was like right when everything broke. That was in the heat of the moment. Who knows? Time does heal all wounds. I'm not saying that Tom and Ariana will ever be friends again, because I don't think Ariana would ever trust Sandoval in any sort of way at all. But you never know. But she did say that. Just like she said, I will not film a scene one-on-one -on -one with Tom Sandoval. And I know production tried to make that happen many times. And she held true to that. Uh, we'll get to the finale in a second because we do see some shots from the finale episode of season 11. So now we cut to Tom uh, in a pool. We see his guys. It, this is great. I love when I get to uh, freeze frame because we get to see Tom's nail polish at a pool party. He's in a pool. He's sipping some sort of cock turly and he gets splashed with water and he's like, oh, dude, I almost got hit with water, dude. He's wearing his Fruit Loop necklace from Kyle Chan. But I just love that the manicure is on point because... And this is, I don't know, where are we? Oh, it's December. Once we get to beach season, folks, all, for all you guys out there, let's make sure the nail polish is done right. We got to get it waterproofed, water resistant, because we're going to be at pool parties, just like Tom Sandoval. We need this. Anyways, he gets hit with something and he kind of... I can slide! Okay, and then we see <laughs> then we see DJ James Kennedy get launched into the air. We don't actually see him like we just see him flying in the air. It's like, I can fly! Guys night! I'm shocked that they didn't put in a I'm a king of the world! Oh Jack, help me! And then we see Tom Sandoval. He has uh he has a big like, what is that? Like a big big hammer. I know there's a I'm not much of a guy myself, so I don't really know what this tool is called. I'm just going to call it Big Hammer. Oh, sledge! Is it a sledgehammer? Yeah, a sledgehammer. And he's in what looks like kind of an Elvisy outfit, but he has a hard hat on, and he's like scumbags and cheaters, dude. Uh, of course, scumbag and cheaters. We that was kind of like the code name for Schwartz and Sandys for a bit. So he's breaking something in some kind of space. So let's guess what that could be, because we know Tom Tom can't really expand anymore. We know that he would not be probably allowed into Katie and Ariana's sandwich shop, something about her. We know Sir is not expanding. And we know, even though it's not touched on really in this trailer, we know that I think his involvement with Schwartz and Sandy's will is, I mean, I think it is, but I think it'll officially be over when this season starts airing and we get to those scenes. So what could he be breaking ground on? The only thing that pops into my head is I think Lisa Vanderpump, I uh, we saw a bunch of cast photos, and if I'm not mistaken, he's wearing the same exact Elvis outfit that I saw in the cast photos. Uh, is it, it not Reno? Where uh, uh, Lisa Vanderpump has a new restaurant coming out, not in Vegas. Is it? No, it's not Reno, is it? Maybe it is in Reno. Uh, anyways, I know she has a restaurant. I think it's like Wolf Lounge or something, but this is also the same trip that I think Lisa Vanderpump surprises DJ James Kennedy with Graham, who he now renamed Hippie, which is going to be bizarre. If Lisa found out that Rachel and her mom gave this, gave Hippie back to the pound, and then Lisa like, Lisa's like, I'll, I'll take him and I'll use him for camera time to give him to DJ James Kennedy. So I have imagining this is like breaking ground on one of Lisa's new restaurant projects. And... That's what I think this scene is right here. Okay, so now we just see a collection of scenes of people partying. We see like a wolf-like dog. So that's why I think Lisa's lounge is wolf lounge. Then we see uh, I'm frozen on a, a scene right here with Katie, Ariana, and Sheena. And Ariana and Sheena are kissing on the lips. Not, I mean, like, 
don't get all horned up, you guy. Not pervy like that. It just looks like a friendship kiss with two beautiful women uh, with their clothes on. It, it, but it's not. It, it really is just like a friendship kiss, but a kiss nonetheless. My God. You look like Dan Von Kent. Okay, folks. Now this uh, this is wild because we see uh, Tom Schwartz uh, at a, a hairstyling place. Now I'm frozen on the image. I don't think this is Joe, his situation ship, who we actually meet in the trailer in a second. I don't think this is her place, and this doesn't look like Joe's around him. But he got his hair dyed blonde, like 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 platinum blonde. Like you know, uh, I'm going through something in my life. As a male blonde, I feel like I'm moments away from getting this this actual same t- t- same do. I will say, I do want to point out when I first saw photos of this, how many months ago was it? Three or four months ago, I made a meme that said uh, Schwartz is in his Kate Gosselin era. Kate Gosselin, remember John and Kate plus eight? Come on, amazing show. But it looked like Schwartz looked like Schwartz looked like you know a lady who has eight kids. And, you know, look like kind of a soccer mom do. And the me, I know, I know Schwartz saw that meme. I'm sorry, Schwartz. I've now probably upset Schwartz a couple of times, but I saw the joke. And by the way, I will say, I hope that meme somehow makes it way into Vanderpump rules, an episode of it. Like that's really, that's the goal of this whole show. And uh, for all my enemies out there, I will retire once I, (laughs) once my podcast or a meme of mine makes it onto one of these shows. I'm out, baby. That's it for me. But uh, yeah, he's getting his hair done. And Lala's like, oh, my God, you look. What is it? Let, let's hear this line again. You look like Dad Bod Ken. OK, yeah. He's like, you look like Dad Bod Ken because uh, he does have that Ryan Gosling Ken. And we see an image of Schwartz in potentially an ill fitting top, even though he I mean, Schwartz is such a good looking dude that he's I mean, he's he looks good no matter what. I will say the hair is probably not the best for him. We know he's gone back to his natural, beautiful brown color, but he's patting his stomach. I will say, if you also follow in Schwartz on Winterhouse this season, this guy's been through it, man. Having to be friends with Sandoval is no picnic, and he took a lot of blowback. But we've always said on the recaps, right, though, at the same time, Schwartz was actually saved in certain ways because last season, season 10, I think would have focused primarily around Katie Maloney and Tom Schwartz's divorce. And we got a little bit of that, of course, but I think it would have been much, much bigger of a conversation on the episodes and in the reunion. And in a lot of ways, I hope season 11 makes up for that so we can actually get into more of the meat and potatoes of how this all ended. I mean, we know how it ended, but like what was what was surrounding that and them trying to be friends and realizing they couldn't and possibly being back to friends I hope this is it. But uh, what do we all think about uh, Schwartz with the Platinum Blonde? Are we digging it? I, I yeah. Okay. What about moving here? Uh, this is my friend, Joe. Yeah. Okay, so now we have two quick clips. Ariana telling Daniel, her boyfriend, what about moving here? Obviously to Los Angeles. I know he was visiting a lot and obviously supporting her a lot through Dancing with the Stars, but he moved, you know, he he's based out of New York. Now, the little I know about Daniel, like I know I was I will say I was surprised to see him filming because I didn't think he would. Obviously, I think probably Ariana wanted him to probably and probably if I was I don't know this, but like I, I, I if I was going through something that intense, I would want people around me to be in scenes with me that I actually could trust and I have a good feeling for. So he kind of makes a face of like, I don't know. I will say, though, too, like with anybody in reality shows, when you bring a non-reality show person into the reality show, I'm not talking just Vanderpump Rules, everything. We see it time and time again that sometimes it's just and also, you know, this he looks really young. I mean, like he looks like he's in his 30s, but I feel like there should be a law like you can't get on a reality show past a certain age because it just I think just. Throwing yourself into the mix really just has to mess with your mind. Like these Vanderpumpers have been doing it now for 11 seasons over the course of what, like 15 years now or something wild like that. And we see where they're all at. They're all cheating on each other. They're all doing crazy things to each other. This is not how normal humans behave. I swear to God, I don't, I don't think it is. 
I don't go out tons, but I don't think this is how normal people behave. So to bring somebody into the toxicity, especially on Vanderpump Rules, you got to really hedge your bets there. Are you doing the right thing? But it's like getting somebody addicted to drugs, which I've never, ever done in my life. How dare you? But the people that do is like, hey, I'll give you a little taste for free. This Daniel, you don't know. Maybe he's going to love it so much that he's going to start like selling tummy tea and those like little tri-colored hair rollers that I see everybody do. You know, like you don't know how, like I've seen it to happen time and time again where they get addicted to the fame you see it a little bit Corey Kiefer right now in Winterhouse seems like he's really loving being on television you just gotta hopefully this dude is a strong dude then directly after that <laughs> we see Schwartz's situation ship Joe Joe the hairdresser who uh, made her Instagram um she had her Instagram private and then she said you know what I'm gonna share everything with you guys and I believe I was on Jolene Lunzer's YouTube show and we were talking and she played her Instagram videos and she was just like, lit, like she was talking to the camera, like everybody was like really invested. And I don't know, I, I wish Joe well, but here's the, I mean, like, listen, I don't think they are boyfriend and girlfriend because as we find out later in this trailer, I think there is elements of this Schwartz is embarrassed by not her exactly, but also I think, I think he, uh, Obviously, he's coming out of the divorce, but I think they're, they they were definitely hooking up. I don't know if they still are, but they definitely were. He was, you know, they were living together. Remember, that was all out on season 10, and we really didn't get to go down that road as much as possible. So now Joe has agreed to film. And in this scene, we see, you know, remember Katie Maloney famously called her, uh, said she had crackhead energy. That's not me. That's Miss Katie Maloney. Um, and I will say with this, we're introduced with her was like shoving something in Tom's face frantically. And I don't know about crackhead energy, but it is energy. That's, that's what I'll say. I'm just a bitch in these streets trying to rebrand and get a sperm donor. Okay. So now we see a scene in Lala's studio. We see the send it to Daryl, the very successful merchandise behind Lisa Vanderpump. So Lisa's in one of the, the, the couches little couch chairs and Lala's on the other side, you know, and Lala, I'm just, I'm just trying to be a bitch in these streets, trying to rebrand and get a sperm donor. Oh my God. As I was doing this, if you listen to the recaps last season, I forgot about little Lala. Remember little Lala? We may, we, we named uh, Lala's private parts and little Lala would be like, what's up, bitch? I'm not going to fuck up little Lala. <laughs> I've got to listen to some of that back because I don't even know if that's the voice I did. But little Lala. But I love Lala. You know, I love when she talks all gangster. Like, I just, I'm just in these streets, yo. I'm in. Dude, you you work off of Melrose. Like, in these streets. Like, I'm just in these streets, yo. Trying to rebrand, young. You know, and get me an egg donor. And Lisa Vanderpump, I'm guessing this is probably around Give Them Lala, the, the podcast that she does. Which, Lala's very talented podcaster. There's no joke there at all. But I bet this is like a scene where Lala interviews Lisa on her podcast. And then this is the conversation afterwards where Lala is saying, I want to be a businessman like you. And little Lala's like, yeah, put a mic down here, baby. I'm ready to go. I'm little Lala. <laughs> Sorry. This would be a perfect, right, right, the, this would be a perfect scene right now. For Ken to walk in and like, did you, I heard egg donor. I heard you were looking for an egg donor. I can't believe that. I think I've got a few swimmers left. I, I'm not in a jacuzzi like Tom and Raquel. I've got swimmers. But anyways, the photo of Lisa, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see she looks really nonplus. She, I can't tell if that's just work, like if she's gotten so much Botox, her face can't move. Um, cause I've done that before. Or if she's just literally like, what is this bitch saying to me right now? What does she mean? And also I would imagine if you're as successful as Lisa Vanderpump, you always got to look over your shoulder. Like is Lala about to open a restaurant? So I guess Lala's storyline is going to be wanting a sibling for ocean and, uh, and rebranding because I think her podcast, if I'm not mistaken, not gone through full rebranding, but it's really successful. I know she works out of a studio or she has some sort of studio now. So maybe that's what this conversation is about. Time will tell. You wrote me off. You're such a hypocrite. I have a crush. Okay. Now we've awoken an ancient beast. Jax Taylor is back. Season 11. I think he's saying you roped me off. I could be wrong on what he said. And Lisa's like, oh, oh, 
ha! But, you know, Tom Sandoval made all of these old cast members come back. But Jax is Jack. Jax is fully Jaxing here. He's angry. He's angry. He's angry. Like uh, he's so angry that I'm like, oh, my God, he's back on caffeine. But he looks angry immediately. And now remember that that Vanderpump Rules is going to lead into or have a little bit of crossover with Vanderpump Valley or the Valley or whatever they're going to call it. Uh, so you'll see probably the scenes with Jax tie into the scenes with the Valley spinoff with Dodie, Brittany, Jax, Janet Elizabeth, Janet Elizabeth and her husband, Jason. They had their beautiful baby this weekend. Uh, I, I really love those guys, but they're going to be in this show as well. So just remember that. But we saw Jax and then. Wow, we get to. Oh, my God, I'm really taking a long time. This is classic me. OK, so we see Katie talking to this like a uh, pretty girl, but looks very young. She has like purple dye in her hair and Katie, uh, she, Katie. I mean, I was about to say like, yeah, Katie's not like, <laughs> never mind. Anyways, this girl right here, you guys, that we find out that Tom and Katie are both vying for the affections of is a girl named Tori Keith. Tori Keith. Uh, I listened to some of her stuff today. She, I really like her music. She's a musician, but she was filming with them. A lot of people had pointed her out to her and all like kind of the BTS, the behind the scenes shots. But Tori Keith, what shocked me about seeing her is that she looks really, really young. And then I looked up to she's 24 years old, 24 years old. On his worst couple. I've never been in a love triangle. Okay. So Tori Keith is saying, oh my God, I'm like actually... I'm, I'm I like a I like both parties of a divorce couple, and then we see a split screen of Katie and Tori kissing. Ooh la la! A little different than the Sheena Ariana kiss, but we also see Schwartz kissing Tori. Schwartz still has his brown hair, so either this is at the beginning of the season or at the end after he dies back that platinum bly that that butcher job he did. But uh, it's Tori and both, and they're kissing both. I got to tell you, if, if if this is if this is what Katie's heart is swaying towards, I'm team Katie on this one. And also, I think Katie could steal any woman from Schwartz any day of the week. And I I mean, I just think like, dude, if you're going to go up like I, I think a woman <laughs> now, no, okay. I think a woman knows how to touch another woman better than a man ever. Can. <laughs> I love that. I'm, now I'm going to give you my thoughts. <laughs> but also, if like, listen. Bravo right now, huge for uh, bisexual lesbian relationships uh, or just um, female friendships, as we know with Morgan Wade and Kyle. I'm Morgan Wade. I have to tell you, Katie kind of looked like she was wearing Western wear in the last shot. And that's what reminded me of Morgan Wade. <laughs> it would be great by the end of the season. Kyle looks <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Katie looks exactly like Morgan Wade. She's got a throat tag. Uh, I'm going to steal any woman away from you, Schwartz. I'm Katie Wade. So anyways, they're making it. Make me the best man win. I see. And Katie says, let the best man win. But like I said, Katie would, I, Katie would win. But obviously, this is a storyline, though, you guys, that I don't know if I truly fully have my heart invested in or believe fully. I feel like, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I, I, I think Katie definitely could have, that's not my issue. My issue is like, that's so on the nose. Like that's such a storyline of a, 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 a random girl that's hooking up with both Katie and Schwartz. Like in what world, even if we're in the Vanderpump universe and the cameras are off, that's still wild. Like, I want to know more about this storyline. I want to believe that just seems such a, that seems so far fetched just looking at it, but I'm totally down to see it. I just want to know what the reality of that reality is because we know that Katie's not with Tori anymore because I thought she was hinting that she was with a band member of some band. Uh, well, I don't know if, well, anyways, and Tom, I think has a bunch of situationships and I don't think that's anyways. Yes. Storm coming. I've Okay, so Lisa's like, there's going to be a shit storm coming. And all of a sudden, we have glass breaking, like hue, like purple hue and white hue. And all of a sudden, the, the, the Chiron pops up and it says, long held in white lettering. And then secrets in purple, long held secrets. So you're like, holy shit. Cheated out with a makeout slut. Made out with Sheena like Vegas. Don't even know. 
So then we hear Schwartz in talking to Lala and he's like, dude, I'm like a make out slut, dude. I'm like a make out slut. I even made out with like Sheena in Vegas, dude. And Lala kind of gives this like zoiks. Like what? 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 My feelings never mattered to you. It was one. And then we go to the next scene. Katie, Katie's in this little denim number and she goes, my feelings never mattered to you. And Schwartz is like, it was like just one kiss. So we don't know. Is he talking about the Sheena information? Because he is a self-proclaimed makeout slut. This could be with anybody. I do know women that have made out with Schwartz that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it could be anybody. Trailers, reality show trailers will always kind of try to divert your attention one way, like look over here when the reality is over here. And this could be a complete misdirection. I just wanted to point that out. Like I said, this could be about little she mini Sheena from season eight from the Vanderpump in Vegas. We don't know because Sheena actually comments by celebs. Uh, Danny Pellegrino made a post of like, Sheena, you made out with, you know, and she was like, what did Sheena say? Let me pull that up right now. I was just reading this earlier and I thought you guys would dig this if you haven't saw it anywhere uh, yet. Okay. So Danny said, Sheena, you made out with Schwartz and we're just now finding out about it. How could you do this to us? Question mark. And Sheena was like, things that were supposed to go to the grave, but it's not exactly what you think. Stay tuned. Sheena, very used to television, how to tease things out. But this poor Sheena, I feel like I just already saw the, the writing of people of like, Sheena's never loyal. She never has people's backs. Oh my God. So I don't know what that means. If it's, I just, but also she does say things that were supposed to go to the grave. But the first rule about Vanderpump rules is nothing goes to the grave. There, there are no secrets on Vanderpump rules. If you think there's a secret, it will be revealed one day for a storyline, period. I miss who he used to be to me. Okay, and then we see a scene of Sheena talking to Katie. I miss who he used to be to me. And Katie kind of looking like whatever. So this could go a lot of ways. Obviously, the last scene would make you think, talking about Schwartz, was there some kind of Sheena-Schwartz relationship we didn't know about? But I think she's actually talking about Tom Sandoval. I miss how he used to be to me because we ended last season with that iconic scene with Sheena and Tom of Sheena like, you fuck, you know, you fuck your best friend instead and kind of washing her hands of Tom. But unfortunately, it's been spoiled through social media that they are hanging out here and there together at BravoCon, at Life is Beautiful, those things. So I think that's Sheena crying, probably being conflicted. A lot of you guys will point, will kind of try to make Sheena as this kind of not evil character, but I just think that Sheena feels very deeply in a very young way. And I don't think she sometimes, I think she believes, I think she sometimes takes people at like face value and kind of believes whatever she is told. Even, I don't know. She's a complicated character. You guys, you make out as if this is fun. It hasn't been fun. You want me yeah. to Okay, so now we see a scene out by the trees. Brock, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna... <laughs> I haven't done my Brock Irish way. You make it like it's all fine. It's not fine, Sheena. <laughs> so I don't know what that's in regards to it all. You make it. <laughs> Sorry. And then we uh, cut to a scene with Schwartz. End your life under my. Kissing some girl. And then we cut to Katie Maloney in a different scene going like, I could end your life whenever I wanted to something. And I think he, I think, I don't know who she's talking to here. It's so quick. Under my me. Nothing. Oh, she's saying like, I could end your life. Just undermine me. I think to Sheena. And then we cut to Allie Luber, uh, very fresh faced in like a, a living room situation. In this group, ever stays a secret. You are nowhere. And says Allie, by the way, kind of like is the most clearest thing of the bunch that nothing in this group stays secret. And then we immediately, we cut to a scene with Sheena, Katie and Ariana. What happened? I don't know what. Wait, sorry. Let me go back here. Group ever stays a secret. You want to know what happened? Oh, so Sheena going, you want to know what happened to Katie? And I'm guessing that's maybe about the Schwartz thing. And then all of a sudden glass cracks again, white lettering, shattered, purple lettering, friendships, put that together, shattered friendships. Oh my God. I don't know what the future for me and Tom looks like. I'm trying okay. So then we see Schwartz. He's like, oh, I don't know what the future of me and Tom looks like. Which, like, I mean, they have been the 
the most constant loving relationship of this entire series. So we had heard this, that Schwartz was actually taking a little bit of break from Tom. He said it on winter house, just a couple of episodes ago. Uh, obviously they're back in full steam. They're doing podcast interviews together. All is good there. But in this season, he's like, I don't know how far we're going to go. And then we cut to Lisa Vanderpump. So me and Tom looks like I'm trying to help this you. is my life. Okay. So it's Lisa talking to Tom Sandoval. I'm trying to help you dear boy. And he's like, this is my life, dude. This is my life, dude. Like the Billy Joel song. And then we cut to Katie Maloney. You're a bit much all the f***ing time. She's just Okay, so Katie Maloney's like, it's a bit much. And Lala's like, you're a bit much all the fucking time. And then little Lala's like, yeah, bitch, you're a bit much, bitch. And then we cut to Tom Sandoval and looks like some kind of zebra button-up shirt, hair slick back. Good girlfriend, though, right? No, she's not. Are you embarrassed by me? You've been the... Okay, so they're all talking to Schwartz of like, she's your girlfriend, right? And then we cut to Joe... Uh, Joe with the big energy going, are you, are you embarrassed by me? Which I mean, like, I think we all watch that. We're like, yeah, man, I totally, I totally is. But I'm so happy that we get her in this season. I think that's great. I, I really am looking forward to finding out what she's all about. Are you embarrassed by me? You've been the other woman in a Tom, relationship. Wait, yeah. I say that. Okay. So now Sandoval's in Sheena's face. You have been the other woman in a relationship, dude. Because of course, that's how this whole thing started with Eddie Cibrian and Blandy, Brandy Glanville, remember? And Sheena's immediately, you are not going to say that about me. You are not going to do that. You stop trying to f***ing like do sh to me. And then Ariana, we cut to her crying. Stop trying to do shit to me. Uh, that, <laughs> that's what I... When I had a trainer, that's what I would tell him. I was like, stop trying to do shit to me. But obviously, this this is just, I mean, in no other world would you be asked to film a season of your divorce or your breakup, but they have to do this. Like, they went really quickly into filming. What did they have, like a month and a half break before they went into filming? So it's wild. You <laughs> Okay, so this is my one of my favorite moments of the trailer, and it's such a small moment. We saw it in the BravoCon trailer earlier. Now, Tom, I don't believe, is going to one-on-one -on -one therapy, even though he'll probably tell you who he is. But he, I think, is going to be like, I'm doing everything, dude. Quit drinking. I'm drinking green juice, all this stuff. And I think he's doing, if I'm not, he's doing screen therapy. So his ears are covered, like so he's like desensitized. He has a mask around his eyes, ears covered, and he's screaming. Ah, oh, dude! Ah, oh, oh, dude! Ah, oh, God, so much rage! And I shit you not, you guys, he turns into the incredible Sandoval Hulk. And he goes, ah, oh, Sandoval smash! Pins and batteries, dude! But I'm telling you, even when you hear, I keep getting sent the, the Teddy and the Freddie and Tamara podcast, with Tom, it's there's still this underlying rage that Tom has. Like it's still, and it's not at himself. It's at all of us. It's at Ariana. It's all of us. It's scumbags and cheaters. It's all of us. It's him. So I believe this is him. This is, I believe he believes himself screaming in this. I believe he loves, this is kind of like that masturbatory showmanship um, that I used to love, but I think this is going to be one of those scenes where we're like really seeing how in depth this is. I'll have to see the whole episode, but I'm, I'm very much here for Tom Sandoval's scream therapy. It's a very intense little image to see. Ah! You literally ah! my best friend. You've got so much going. What does Tom say? He's like, you literally, f you best friend. You've got so much. No, it's you literally did my best friend. You've got so I think you literally something with my best friend. And then they do a shot of Sandoval walk. Okay. Sandoval walking. I just looked at this closer. He's in a red shirt, fruit loop necklace, white hat, which you notice he was wearing Tom, Tom hats a lot. He doesn't wear shorts and sandies anymore. So I don't know what short says. You literally fucked up my best friend. Maybe. Cause I don't think it's, you literally fucked my best friend, but also when I look close at this, it's like a long, far away shot. Like they're, they're getting like a sneak attack shot on Tom Sandoval and his shirt. I shit you not says dipped out his shirt says di I'm not his shirt literally said I dipped out dude remember Raquel dipped out dude dipped out remember he, he has his own merchandise on or somebody made him a dipped out shirt so 
actually that looks pretty good. Like I, I was gonna, I would actually wear that shirt, I, but listen, I pretty much I'll wear anything with any kind of pop culture thing on it. So much going up to do still, Tom. It's sad to me. Okay, so then we have DJ James Kennedy going up to Sandoval. He's like, you literally have so much growing up to do, Tom. It's literally sad to me, Tom. Guys night! And we see Tom. He kind of looks like Marky, Marky Mark. Not Mark Wahlberg, the actor, but when Mark Wahlberg was Marky Mark. You know, it's like, you know, feel it, feel it. Feel the Sandoval vibration. And Sandoval's just sitting there like, what, dude? What are you talking about? And it's bad when DJ James Kennedy's like, you've literally got so much growing up to do. Because a lot of people could be like, well, that's the pot calling the kettle black. And it would be great at this moment. Hippie, Graham, a.k.a. Hippie, runs in and just like attacks Tom, you know, who knows. But now we cut to the finale party, which is Kyle Chan's jewelry party. That's where the finale is going to be. It's sad Francisco. to me. Oh, no. oh, stop, stop, dude. And we see a drink get thrown in Tom direction, Tom Sandoval's direction. And you can make this out. He's like, dude, stop, stop. Like he's trying to reason with whoever is throwing this drink. Now, people are saying that this is was real. But also there is this part of like Vanderpump conspiracy mind that I've grown, even though I hate conspiracies, is that it also reminds you remember Jonathan Majors, the, the actor that's on trial right now for abuse towards uh, his girlfriend. Uh, he's the, you know, Kang in all the Marvel movies. I don't know if you guys, there's a crossover between Marvel and Vanderbump, but anyways, he's on trial right now, but there was this video, um, uh, like three months ago that like where Jonathan majors after this had all broken, like came upon a high school fight and broke it up, broke up the fight between two. Like you guys don't want to fight guys. Come on, come on. Like he broke it up and then it got leaked to the public. And it was just like, of course, like it was kind of the weirdest time because it was like, of course, somebody that is like you know, you would want this out there of like somebody trying to break up a high school fight. So part of me was saying like, did this guy, was this set up too? So Tom could be like, no, no, it's all right, man. What's going on, dude? Talk to me. Let me talk you down, dude. Like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It was just a thought in my head. Now you're proving to me that you are terrifying. Hey, Tom. Okay. And then Lala's on a boat with Tom Sandoval and he's like, you're proving to me that you are terrifying. And little Lala's like, yeah, don't get near me. And we see Tom like, Oh, what do you mean? Like kind of that kind of reaction. And uh, Lala, oh, we, Lala goes back and forth. Lala is very wishy-washy sometimes with these people. And she's obviously made peace with Sandoval. But, you know, this is very Lala. I'd be like, you, you know, you are terrifying to me. All these men are terrifying, which we all are. But it's it's interesting verbiage. I'm still in love with the girl. This is bullshit. Okay, so then Schwartz is like, I think he's still in love with Raquel. I guess this is before the name change to Rachel. Like, oh, I think he's still in love with Raquel. And then we see Lisa going, she blocks you, dear boy. She blocks you on social media. It's over. Bullshit. My lord. It's over. And Sandoval's like, bullshit, dude. Love lasts forever, dude. You don't even understand. We were both models. We were model on the mean streets of modeling, Lisa. You don't even know. But I love that Tom Sandoval, of course, is sticking up for Rachel still. Like, I love that Rachel's not in this. And the storyline is going to be that Tom's heart gets broken. You guys, he, Rachel's ignoring him and blocked him. And we're all, as an audience, we probably will buy this. And we're going to feel all bad for him. Like, And then Rachel's a bad guy again. I don't know. Also, he's wearing the Fruit Loop necklace in this and then a cutoff sweater as one does in August in Los Angeles. Lawyer will be dealing with you, the house, and my f***ing children. You're so then it's the scene that we kind of saw at BravoCon of like, my lawyer will be dealing with you with Ariana, my house, and my children. Now, people are like, my children? What the hell? She means her animals. She means her pets. Um, but there was a, a quick thought in my mind. I was like, oh my God, didn't, didn't they like freeze eggs at a certain point? Or do, did we, like, I was like, we were going through, I was like, oh my God, is this? No, it was, it's her pets, you guys. And Tom Sand, this is the scene that they filmed together, but there were other people there in their house. And Ariana is mad, dude. When Ariana, like, I will tell you, Ariana, like for like Lala, Sheena, all those people, like they can get angry. And to me, it's kind of like, okay, like, you know, but Ariana kind of scares me when she gets angry, right? Like, I believe it. Uh, Tom is in a black cutoff um, shirt, candy necklace, and an aloe white hat. Soldier hat? But Tom is like, 
children because tom probably doesn't even understand or tom thinks calling animals children ridiculous and how dare you tom as a as a former pet owner how dare you are our, our furry animals are our families and our children and then here's the capper here it is lala kent is talking to sheena Never experienced someone who gets cheated on and suddenly she becomes god i've never experienced Someone getting cheated on and then becomes God. And we end with a scene with Ariana on stage. I think maybe that was emo night, but she, some something big. And she's like, it's a shot from behind into the audience with the spotlights, with all the lights coming down on her. And like, I'm so sorry that we did not celebrate you as much as we should have when Randall cheated on you multiple times. But we've talked about this ad nauseum. It's just different stories. And Lala, you are so amazing the way you are. I think Lala will have a career long after Vanderpump rules. But this, I just think this is a bad look. And I mean, it's spicy. It's all of that stuff. But we all called this. We all knew this would happen. We'll see how far down the rabbit hole that whole thing goes. But I think, uh, I, you know, I, I understand the sentiment, but it's like, it's because we're all different people. And we, you know, a lot of us believed in that relationship and that's why we were all shocked. That's why it became scandal. When Randall, all that shit was found out about him. A lot of us were like, Oh, I heard like, we all thought he was a good guy because you stayed with him so long, but we all thought he was a douchebag before. And we were like, Oh yes, we always thought he was a douchebag. That's right. That's right. So it's just different. And there's plenty of room, by the way, this might be Ariana's season or she got a lot of attention next season could be your season and get a lot of attention. Are you kidding me? It, it all, it's all cyclical. And then Vanderpump rules January 30th. And now, uh, <laughs> this is a very special episode. Let's go to the cast photo this season. Now, this is, remember last season's cast photo, it had them all on the bar, and we we saw little clips of this being filmed on the BravoCon trailer, which was very dark, because how they were all looking, the angles, it was like, it looked like Tom was looking at Rachel, even though Ariana was next to Tom, it was like really dark, you could like, and I thought it was like kind of positioned and like photographed separately and then put together by a computer, but they actually filmed that all at the same time. So we see this, they're all in kind of like a brown, taupe, white kind of pattern. And let's go through some of these looks. I do want to say, though, I found out through Lala's Instagram today that this was all shot separately because Lala on her Instagram shows her sitting on the couch by herself. So they all shot this separately and uh, then it was pieced together by a computer, which actually makes more sense because I was like, wow, Ariana's sitting down for like a full photo shoot. So, OK, let's start from uh, right to left here or my rights. I'm looking at that. So we have Katie Maloney. And Katie Maloney looks like she's thinking, did I leave the oven on? Like, oh, my God, uh, is everything OK at home? I, like, or she's thinking like, oh, my God, how many girls could I steal away from Tom Schwartz? Um, and then Lala, Lala looks like she's looking off to the side. Like, I don't want to look. To, I don't want to look at any of any of you guys. Now, you can't see it, but little Lala is being covered up by Ariana's hands. But you can tell little Lala just wants a break free, break out of there. Ariana is staring directly at the camera. She looks beautiful staring directly at the camera going, what the fuck? Why am I doing another season of this? And then Lisa, Lisa is in like a white pantsuit. She has her like the, the hands in the pocket. And she's like, can you believe it? We're doing it again. I'm on top of the world. It's great, right? Everybody looks kind of pained in this photo, except for Lisa. She's like, I'm back on top, baby. All right. Yeah. And then we move down to Schwartz. And I have to say, I feel like Schwartz is a very good looking man, but I feel like this has been digitally retouched. And also his shape has been digitally retouched. I don't know if I'm, I, 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 but he's kind of looking at the camera of like, Haha, I'm pretty much scot-free again. It's all on Sandoval. <laughs> I'm amazing. I'm cute. You want to take care of me? I'm like a teddy bear that'll make out with you. Uh, and he looks really happy. And then we get to, to Mr. Tom Sandoval. Tom is kind of like, you know, just like, hey, I'm getting I'm getting paid. I rene renegotiated my contract. I know a lot of you guys don't even know uh, if you like me anymore, but I'm I'm here. He kind of looks resigned to being there. So there's Tom Sandoval. And then I love this photo. Also, just none of them are really looking at each other at all. And then um, <laughs> Sheena, Sheena is another, Sheena's looking at the ground like she's like, oh, my God, did I like, is that a dime on the floor? And she looks happy about it. Oh, my God, there's a dime on the floor. And I, I think I can I think I can use that dime. And then DJ James Kennedy looks like he's like a, a spy or an assassin. He's also not looking at anybody, but he's like, oh, God, 
somebody might be coming and inviting me to guys night. He looks very like he like something's about to go down. But all of this, you can tell if you start looking at the actual, we're insane here, look at the actual photos, you would tell that none of these people are in the room together because they all, none of them are making eye contact with any of them. They're all looking in different directions. And on the floor, you can see they put in some broken glass and broken glass in the background. And uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible, you guys. So that's, 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 the, uh, that's a quick 50 minute breakdown of a two minute trailer. Oh my God, you guys get ready for six hour recap starting January 30th or probably the 31st. How many days are in January? Anyways, we'll be doing full recaps on so bad. It's good. I'm sure we'll hear so much more information in the meantime. If you have any hot tips, hot, hot, juicy, hot, juicy goss, please send it to so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like, send it to friends, do all that YouTube stuff that you're supposed to do. And of course, podcasting, we're just going to have an interview right now anyway. So continue for that. But are you guys excited? This kind of got me excited because I got to tell you, I'm on Vanderpump exhaustion, but it's great to have new content that we can break down and see what the producers are trying to tell us what the story is going to be this season. This is just a taste. We'll see how much misdirection is in here. But this is what we got to go on right now. So we'll see you January 30th. Special thanks to Medita Lopez, who put this video together and all the images. Killer. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon, guys. Bye. Because you know, tell us, I suppose, in the trailer breakdown of the Nella.